Hi everybody. Today in this video, we're going to be continuing the series of making a track from start to finish. In the last episode, we made the kick and the bass. And in this section, we're going to look at making some percussion to move along with this. Um, and we're going to get started. But first, I'll just give you a little bit of an audition of what we've got so far. Now, um, after listening back to it, I've come to think that this kick drum's a little bit too weak for this track. Um, so maybe uh, once we're getting the percussion sorted and we're ready to move on to the next part, I'm going to show you a technique for if you no longer want that kick and you want to swap it out and put something else in its place, um, there's a really easy way to do it. So this is what we've got so far. Okay, so if you're not using headphones, you're probably going to find a bit of this difficult to hear. And I've on purpose sort of taken out a lot of the high frequencies, which would translate well through speaker systems. So the bass in particular is a sub sine wave. You might hear the clicking in that, but you may not actually hear the, the tone of the sub. And then these guys, they're pretty subtle and later on we're going to do some processing to our sounds but for right now we're just going to move on to the percussion so hopefully you can um, follow this along and we're going to get some nice stuff happening so first off we're going to go ahead and create a midi track so um, the, we're going to be structuring our percussion uh, inside of midi clips so I can go ahead and now that I've made this new channel I can select the area and on my keyboard I can press Control, shift and M to create a midi clip okay uh, an alternative way of doing that if I press delete and remove what I just made is with that area selected I can right click in it and I can insert a midi clip so there's a couple different ways that I can actually put that in there. And you'll see down here, uh, automatically what shows up is this um, information. This is some clip information here. So it's referring to this clip. It's telling us the time signature that it's, that it's in, which relates to the timing signature that we've got up here. Um, and it's showing us what color it is. So we could change the color of the clip here. We could also actually type a name in here. So let's say perk because we're going to make some percussion and you can see that it fills out the name there um, and then we got some more um, information here we got the groove and stuff as well but uh, a lot of this, these features right at this point in time we don't really need to know a lot about them so we can we can get stuff done within inside of Ableton without understanding what every single parameter does now of course it's great to know what every single parameter does but it's not important for just getting ideas down and getting started as a beginner. So if we navigate to the drums, we can flick through here and we can listen to some drum kits and we can pick a percussion um, kit that we like. So here's a percussion core kit. Let's have a listen to that. So that's got a shaker in it and a bongo that I might like to use. So let's go ahead and grab this, drag, and we'll drop it on that channel. It's going to load, and then we can see that instead of showing us the inside of the piano roll, now it's showing us the kit that we've just dropped in. And it's showing us a bunch of controls for that kit, but then it's also showing us all of the samples inside the clip, clip uh, inside of the kit, sorry. And then if I trigger this, we, uh, we won't hear it because we have this channel soloed. So if we unsolo it, then we activate the channels again. Cool. Got some really nice chimes there. So we've got some really cool um, samples in here that we're going to be able to make use of. So in particular, the kibasa and the egg shaker, maybe the bongos and the congas, but we can figure that out as we start to arrange it. So um, next what we could do is we could create another MIDI track. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this one percussion. 
and we're going to make a distinction between percussion and drums. So this one is going to be our drums and we're going to scroll through here and we're going to find some drums that we like and we're going to be listening for stuff like hi-hats and snare drums or claps that we like. Okay, maybe this one. I like the hi-hats in it and I like the kind of snare slash clap that it has. So we'll open that up and I'm going to use um, the same technique. So copy that, hold control shift M, press uh, that and we've got this in front of us. And now we can see the piano roll and we can see that the piano roll is not listing us notes on the piano. It's listing all of the samples, if we click that tab, that are inside of here. So we can click between these two. Um, if you're not seeing the piano roll, that means that you don't have the clip selected. So you're probably like this. Um, you've probably got it over here. Uh, so you need to make sure that you've got that channel selected so you can flick between the clips and that. So the snare is here. Ooh, that percussion's interesting, isn't it? It's still going. Um, and we can go ahead and we can place the snare on the timeline. And what I'm going to suggest to start things off is you can see up here the numbers from 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. And you can see the numbers down here. And because it's exactly on the grid, it's correlating, okay? So uh, we can tell, okay, I wanna put a snare after, so there's a kick here, I wanna put a snare right after it. So if I come back to my clip, I can tell, all right, that's 1.3, I want a, a snare right at the beginning of that. So let's have a listen to, if we just solo the kick and we hold control and solo the drums, we will just hear the kick in the drums. Cool. So then what we'll do is we'll put another snare there and we'll put a snare on every third beat. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, so it sounds very dry and very raw right now, and maybe the sample's not even the right sample. Now that I'm listening to it standalone, it's a little bit harsh. There's a couple of other snares. Well, this, uh, this uh, kit has some really interesting samples. I'm really liking that one. And that kick may even be superior to the kick that we've got currently. So we could, well, I mean, I wanted to go for a particular style. I wanted to, a knocking, a, a knocking kick, but maybe we need something that's, because we've got a lot of bass in this track. So maybe we need something that's a bit more punchy, but right now what we want is we want to get rhythmic ideas down and then we can spend a session where we actually swap our samples out and we get better samples. So this is an iterative process. So we're going to get the ideas out and then we'll move forward. And are we going to have, yep, that's a great open hat. So what we'll do is we'll put that on 1.2, an open hat. We can put another one on 1.4, 2.2, 1.4, and we just roll that out. So we put it the same everywhere. And let's have a listen if with the kick, because the kick is keeping the time for the rhythm. Okay, you can see where this is going. We're starting to get a little bit of nice uh, rhythm happening. It's a slow beat, so, you know, give it some time, but we're going to add some shakers to it, and we're going to make things a bit more interesting as we keep layering things up. So how does this shaker sound? I think the shakers in the percussion kit are, are better. We could try using this second hat, um, and we could maybe put it, um, after that kick, so we could put it, say, um, if we zoom in a little bit, 1.4.3. And by the way, the way that this works is you've got one bar of music, so one to two is one bar of music, and then you've got the quarter beats, so one is one quarter beat, 1.2 is another quarter beat, 
and so on and so forth. And then there's even finer designation. So if you right click on uh, the grid somewhere, you can actually select what you want to see. And if I put it on 1.6, we can see that's 1 16th note, 2 16th notes, 3 16th notes, 4 16th notes. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to read this. So we're in the first bar, we're on the fourth beat because we're right at the end, and then we want to be on the third 16th note. So 1.4.3. That's how that reads. Okay. And the more you zoom in, the finer you get if you have the grid set up like that, but the numbers won't show up, but you can put it on narrowest and you get really fine uh, amounts. Too fine maybe in some cases. So anyway, we just want 16th notes and we want to come back here and we can actually place our cursor there. And if we um, look at the, let's just zoom back out so we understand where we are. Um, and the way that you can do that quickly is if you click on a clip and you press Z on your keyboard, it jumps in and shows you at full screen, okay? Um, so if I zoomed out like this by putting my cursor over there and dragging up or down, um, I could zoom all the way out and say, okay, I wanna focus in on this. I click on it so I've got it selected and I press Z and it zooms in. And if you're noticing that that is not zooming in, the problem is, is that this up here is enabled. And what this does is instead of using our keyboard as a computer keyboard, it uses our keyboard as a musical keyboard. And these commands are doing something different. So if we turn that off, then we can use our keyboard for our keyboard commands. So I've got that second hat here and I want to put it right there. So let's have a listen and see how that sounds. It's pretty loud. We could bring it down by changing the velocity here. And we used velocity in the last episode. So what we'll do is we won't have that playing every single time because it's a bit of an overwhelming sound. What we could do is we could either have it playing on the first bar and the third bar, or we could decide we just have it playing on the fourth bar. And I think that's what we'll do. So we'll copy that. I can go control C and then I can actually just delete that. I can put my cursor at the beginning of that bar because what I copied was relevant to this entire period of time. So if I put my cursor there, it's going to copy and it's going to go too far. I want it to start at the fourth bar and I want it to place exactly at 1.4.3. And if I paste it from here, there we go. So now we've got that pattern. Um, and what else could we use on this kit? Let's have a listen. It's a really nice bass growl, but maybe we'll use that somewhere else. So maybe we could try layering this cymbal hit um, on the off, whenever there's a hi-hat. So if I show you, what I can do is I can press fold and it only shows me the actual sounds that I'm using. So what, it, what we can see here is we've got all of these hats and if we put a cymbal alternating when there's not a hat, maybe we could get something interesting happening. And we're playing that symbol at the same time as the snare. So what we might want to do is instead we'll just have it on the four, three, two, and one. So if I just take that away, delete that one, delete that one, delete that one, and delete that one. Let's have a listen. So maybe these ones are too much, but we could keep that first one. So I'll delete them. I like it, nice and slow and monotonous, and we're gonna keep adding more to it. So let's say that these drums for now are fine. We're happy with them. Now let's get some shakers happening. So we've got these egg shaker. So again, I've tried to trigger that sound. I can't hear it. Okay, we need to troubleshoot why I can't hear it. The first thing we're gonna look for is whether anything is soloed or whether anything is pulled down to no volume, okay? So 
straight away I can say, okay, I've got things soloed, so I need to activate the channel. So I can either do it in two ways. I could either go control and then solo that percussion as well, so then I've got so many things soloed. Or what I could do is I could just click on it, unsolo everything, and then that way I can just work with stuff unsoloed. So I'm going to right click on the grid, show 16th notes. And we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. We'll go egg shaker, kabasa, egg shaker, kabasa. And we're going to do that a bunch of times. But if we get tired of doing it manually, what we can do is we can select an area, like from the first bar to the second bar, and we can hold control on our keyboard and press D for duplicate. So we're duplicating that pattern across. I can do it again, I can do it again. So let's have a listen to that shaker with everything. Okay, now it's going to work. Those sounds are the right sounds for this, but it's too loud and it's overwhelming everything else. So we need to decide whether we're going to change the volume right now. And I think that we should. And I think that we should also decide upon maybe a particular type of groove that we're gonna use. Now you might be wondering what groove is. Um, and I'm going to explain it to you. And then I'm going to give you an example of how it works. And this is the perfect sound to give you an example with. So when we're dealing with um, a synthesized sound such as this, or like a sample, um, the sample has a, a character that is um, predefined. It's not like when you hit the snare drum, uh, the snare drum will change its sound depending on how you hit it and how heavy you hit it. In this example, the sound is just playing exactly the same every time. And part of the reason why um, a lot of new producers sound so amateur is because things are quite robotic and monotonous. And whilst you do have to go th through that phase in order to get better, there are some ways uh, and some things to start considering straight away that can help you get to that next level a little bit quicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly turn off my webcam so that you can see what's hiding underneath it. Okay, so one second. Okay, so you should now be able to see something called the groove pull. Okay, and if you don't see it on your computer, that's because you haven't clicked this little yellow button. Okay, so the yellow button is going to open up the groove pull. Uh, it's gray when it's not activated. So this little gray button looks like waves. Uh, and so we've got that open now and we can right click in the window and we can click browse the groove library and it takes it over uh, us over to the section where it says swing and groove and I would suggest that you explore everything that's in here but I'm going to take you to some that I like some grooves and you might still not understand exactly what it is but you should understand pretty quickly so the MPC uh, and I'm going to scroll down to the 16th Okay, so MPC 8, this is referring to 8th notes. And if I right click and show 8th notes, it's these amounts, uh, this amount of time, right? But you'll see that in that amount of time, I've got two shakers. I'm actually using 16th notes. So I'm going to look at a 16th note pattern. So that's why I've scrolled right down here. And now I click on it and you'll hear. And now I'll click on it and you'll hear uh, a rhythm that's playing and you'll notice that some sounds are louder than other others and there's a nice sort of pushing and pulling dynamic to the rhythm so if I come back to the shaker it's just monotonous and robotic sounds all right but monotonous and robotic so what we can do is we can select one that we like I quite like this one. We can click it, we can drag it, and we can actually drop it on top of MIDI clips and audio files. So we're going to drop it on top of that shaker. And what we could do is, I'm just going to adjust the parameters. I'm going to turn the velocity up. So what that means is that if I listen to this again, you'll notice that there's some softer hits and some harder hits, like I said before. And that is being controlled by the velocity. So if I put this on here, uh, 
previously it was only going to apply 35% of the velocity, but I actually want it to adjust the velocity a bit more, so I'm turning that up to 70%. And now if I have a listen to this sound, you're going to notice that it's not as straight and robotic as what it was before. And if I turn that up to 100, it's even more, okay? So we've just added some humanizing to that sound. And what we could do is we could also grab it and we could put it on this clip as well. And then we can have a listen to them together and we can decide, we'll listen to the kick as well. Okay, so we still have a problem of the percussion being very loud and it drowns out the drum kit. So what we want to do is we want to reduce the volume of the percussion and there's a couple ways I could do it. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull down the fader. So this is the volume. We talked about it a little bit in the last video. I'm going to pull that down. Let's get it. Maybe we'll bring it down to negative 10 and we'll have a listen to it and we'll, we'll see whether we think it's maybe too quiet or still too loud. Perfect, perfect volume. So then what we can adjust is I'm really happy with these shakers. And what we might do is we might make a dedicated channel for the shakers. Um, and then we can continue maybe looking at some of the other percussive elements that are inside this drum kit, but we can do it on a different channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this channel, and I'm going to go Control D on my keyboard, and that's going to duplicate it. So I'm going to click on this copy that was just made, and I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it Shaker. Okay. So this is going to be my Shaker channel, and I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to click on this clip. I'm going to open the clip, and I'm just going to... Oh, I'm just going to delete all of the shakers. I'm going to click fold so that I can see all of the other sounds again, and then we'll have a listen to some of the other sounds. So what we could do is we can just have a listen. And we can see whether we can fit some congas in. So maybe if we put a little roll here, let's have a listen to see how that sounds. We can make that work. So what we'll do is we'll bring the velocity of that one down quite low, this one down quite low, and then this one down like that. And we'll just make a little roll. Let's have a listen to some of it. We can just make some little rolls and maybe they'll work. Maybe we'll delete them later on. I'm just going to start kind of placing them in sort of semi-random locations just to see where they work. So you got to experiment. you got to play around. Quite like that a little unexpected and maybe I'm just gonna see whether I can play in one of these locations maybe it'll fit really well I think it sounds really good when it's kind of halfway between one beat and the other boom so let's place it um, maybe if we listen to this part. Let's try it there. Let's 
Let's delete the Congos because I'm not really liking them too much. We'll click all of this area. So I just selected that, I press delete, select all that area, and then I teach you another command. So if I go Control J on my keyboard, it reinstates the entire clip so by creating a new, and that's called a consolidate command. So I can select a whole bunch of extra space and I can consolidate to make the clip that long. If I don't want that space anymore, I can select this area, click on the clip and consolidate it to that. So this is how you change your clip sizings. Let's have a listen to some cowbell. <laughs> Okay, let's put some cowbell in here. I like that. Um, and I'm going to put a cowbell roll in because that's what we do. Um, so if I put one, two, three, four, and if I pull that down, pull that down, pull that down, pull that down, let's have a listen to how that sounds. And I feel like as soon as that roll happens, I'm missing it. So let's go ahead and click zoom out a bit, let's select all of that. We can press Control Z to copy it across, Control Z, Control Z. Let's have a listen. That's pretty cool. Let's pull it down a little bit less in volume. We just want it to be really gentle and in the back there. Cool. So I'm going to put the groove pull on that as well. And then maybe I'll reappear. Yo. So I'm back and we're getting some nice percussion happening. And I'm thinking that this needs to be more of a clap than a snare. So let's have a look. We'll click sounds. We'll come up here and we'll write clap. Let's see what Ableton's got for claps. Okay, it's got a few. Oh, does it have anything? No claps, are you serious? Samples, claps, here we go. So come down to samples. That one's nice. That one's nice. Right click, insert audio track, grab that guy, drag and drop him. So we can play it together with the snare and see whether it makes it nicer. What we could do is we could come in here we could click fold so we see everything. We select that snare, we press zero to mute it. Copy and duplicate it out. Grab the volume, pull it down a bit. Okay, let's have a listen for some more. We can add layers. like that one as well. Grab that one, make another channel, pop it down there. Let's have a listen to them together. We'll pull the volume of it down a little bit as well. Great. Oh, that one's full power. That one too. Um, let's grab that one. Create another audio channel. Yes, a lot of audio channels for this one. We grab it, we drop it on the channel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the tail end of it and make sure that it's exactly two sixteenth notes long. Your sample may vary, so just bear that in mind. But just watch what I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a volume fade. So this controls the volume, all right? So if I click on that clip, press Z, I zoom in on it. If I grab that note, you can see it's changing this, and that is a volume fade, right? And if I grab it from the start, I'm fading the volume in. So let's click that, solo it, right? As opposed to that. 
So so I want it f the full attack, so I'm not going to fade the beginning, but I'll just fade the end just so it kind of rolls off in volume pretty quickly. Uh, and then I'm going to click it, and I'm going to go Control j to consolidate that command again. And now that clip is exactly that period of time long. I can click on it, and I can press the R button to reverse it. And then if I click on it and I pull it down heaps in volume, because I know it's it's quite loud, you can see how loud it is. If we pull it down to like negative 20, and then we zoom out, we unsolo it, we put our cursor at the beginning of the timeline and press start. That sounds awesome. So we copy all of that, we press D, and we're gonna put it on every second um, bar. Great. Okay, I think we're getting some really nice percussion here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to label everything. So we're going to call this clap layer one, clap layer two, and then we're going to go rev clap, reverse clap. Um, and then what we could do is we could click all of these, go control, so click the bottom one, hold shift, click the top clap. So we've got all the claps selected and go control G to group them all. Click on that, right, hold down control again, press R to rename, clap, group, enter. And then we'll click the percussion, we click the clap group, so we got all of us selected. The group will select all of these guys in the between. Control G, click on that main group, percussion, drums. Okay? And what color do we want to call, uh, color our percussion and drums? Let's go right click. And let's go lime green and right click and then we can go assign to all, right? So assign track to all group tracks and clips. So all of our percussion is lime green and that's really bright. Damn. So what we could do over top of all of the percussion is the same technique that we used on the bass. Remember how I side chained? Uh, what section did I side chain? Did I do that or did I imagine it? I did do it. Cool. So I've got this sidechain compressor. Sorry, guys. Uh, I got the sidechain compressor over top of the bass channel. I can click on that and I can copy it. And remember what this does? It just pushes the bass out of the way. We're going to put it on the percussion, on the group. So it's going to push all the percussion out of the way. But maybe it's going to be too dramatic to start with. So let's have a listen. It's pretty dramatic. So we're going to pull it down a bit. So if we listen with the kick, if I turn it off, turn it back on, so it's pushing the volume down as the kick plays. And I'm just going to make it a little bit more subtle about there. All right, so what kick was it that we ended up liking a lot? Was it that one? That's pretty full on. Maybe I don't like it anymore. It's got some really nice body down below to it. What we could do is we could try to use it and audition it. So come up here, click on the kick, go control D to duplicate that channel. We make another kick channel, right? We come down here, we click on this drum kit. I can go control C on the mad mollusk kit. Um, is that mollusk? Maybe it's not. Click on this drum kit and control V and it's going to paste it on top of there and this one's going to disappear. Boom. So now is that kick swapped? It is. Okay. So let's have a listen to that kick with everything else. Okay, and then let's listen again with the other kick. 
Okay, so I see what I'm liking here and what I'm not liking. So, how about we take that from that kick and we just layer it over top. So now if I turn that layer off, oh, it's missing. Let's turn it back on. Let's listen to it all together. Let's give it some more top here. I think that's our drums done for now. So, we have a kick, we've got a layered kick, we've got a bass with a sub, and then some spread layers over top of it. And we'll beef the bass up a bit when we get to a point where we're going to process things. And we've got a bunch of percussion with some really nice groove on it. So, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to take the track even further. Uh, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. We covered a lot today. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.